Why do people of faith or religious people struggle more with porn and sexual addiction recovery than those who are non-religious and have no particular spiritual beliefs? This is a really interesting topic and one that we haven't covered before. My name is Heather and I'm founder of Fight the Beast, a porn and sexual addiction recovery organization, and I'm excited to answer this question today. Now, although Fight the Beast is a non-religious and non-denominational organization, this is a really important topic because porn and sexual addiction affect people of all walks of life. And when we look at faith in recovery, it can have a huge impact on the success of recovery as well as create several pitfalls that make recovery more difficult. So over the last few years studying porn and sexual addiction, we've identified these patterns in people of faith who are struggling to break free and really achieve the full benefits of recovery. So if you are you know, struggling yourself or you are trying to help someone who is struggling, these are really important to be aware of. The first pitfall of faith and recovery is having an unhealthy relationship with God. This can be one that's described as chaotic, um, painful, you feel feelings like you can't trust God or you're angry at God or Um, You feel like you're not getting the love and attention that you want or that you just aren't certain about your faith. It's a really um, difficult place to be. Shame is undeniably one of the biggest triggers for porn and sexual addiction and one of the biggest reasons why people stay in the addiction cycle, particularly people of faith. The cycle begins with shame which basically triggers urges or flight mode and makes you want to escape that shame, which then leads to relapse, which leads to greater shame and so forth. And the cycle continues. You may be familiar with the scripture from Abraham, quoted by Abraham Lincoln, that a house divided cannot stand. And that's basically what's going on here. If you are in a chaotic place with your faith or your conscience, then you're going to feel more shame and have more difficulty quitting because you're going to have more of those urges. When you are battling yourself or you are battling God, you are struggling to survive emotionally and spiritually and ultimately losing on all fronts. This is why so many people struggling with porn and sexual addiction leave the church because it becomes too emotionally difficult to handle those feelings of shame and guilt. Not only do you feel that shame and guilt from God, but you might also be afraid of other people at church judging you, your religious leaders, your peers, people who would be ashamed of you. And so it just doubles all of this, these negative emotions surrounding recovery that make it really difficult to achieve the benefits as you go. So people will leave the church because they just want to escape that. It just becomes too much. As long as an individual has an unhealthy and chaotic relationship with God, they can't have a clear conscience and will inevitably struggle with self-esteem, self-respect, self-confidence. And this lack of confidence can lead to a hopelessness and a depression and make recovery more difficult. So that cycle is poor relationship with God, low self-esteem, relapse, difficulty feeling God's love, shame, low self-esteem, relapse, and so on. In order to beat this, the journey of recovery requires resolve and courage in the face of challenges. But how do you have that resolve and courage if you're struggling with self-esteem? This is where I think 12-step programs really have it right because they focus on that humble admission to a higher power that I am weak and I need help. It comes from admitting, I know I have a problem and I need help. A lot of times people who have a chaotic relationship with God, they feel kind of at odds with God, like they're fighting him. Maybe 
they feel like they're supposed to be better in one area of their life or they're not doing something that they feel like they're supposed to be doing. And this can lead to that chaos that then leads to further addiction. Getting on your knees and saying, hey, I know I'm broken. Please forgive me. Help me to get out of this. I can't do this myself. And repairing that emotional part of the relationship you have with God, um, that humility, that asking for help can help you to develop a greater self-esteem, to clear your conscience, to help you feel better to the point where you can successfully walk the path of recovery, you know, and forgive yourself and feel forgiven by God. That sense of greater self-worth that comes from that cycle is because you have a foundation of faith and that clear conscience and a peace of mind knowing that you are doing your best and that God will help you with the rest. The second pitfall of faith in recovery is misconceptions about the process of recovery. Stories of miraculous healing from addiction and temptation are wonderful, but the fact of the matter is these are rare. More often than not, even really faithful individuals have to face a serious uphill battle in the recovery process. The fact is simply that God does not often remove the consequences of our actions, including the withdrawals of urges and... um, and the struggles of addiction, as well as the consequences, such as the loss of family members, friends, or loved ones because of it. Um, All these effects of addiction stay in our lives, and a lot of times people of faith expect that they will somehow miraculously disappear because they are on a path to recovery, that all of a sudden they won't have sexual urges or They won't have issues with erectile dysfunction or, you know, their wife will come back because now they're being a good person. These misconceptions about the process of recovery cause people of faith to become angry and to continue to relapse. God kind of seems to say, I told you over and over not to get entrenched in this, not to go near it, not to get tied up in sexual sin. And because I warned you, you have to suffer these consequences. And I I hate seeing that. And I hate that it's hurting you this way. So I will walk with you on the path to recovery. And like a good parent, He will help you heal and recover, but he won't necessarily take those consequences away. It's important that we have these consequences, that we suffer through the uphill battle of the addiction process in order to increase our personal discipline, increase our strength, and to turn to God in a way that will strengthen our relationship with him. Successful recovery is achieved in taking personal responsibility, not only for the addiction itself, but also for these consequences. I brought these consequences on myself. I put myself in this hole. I dug my grave. I burned bridges with family and friends. And when you take full responsibility for all of those consequences, You're able to get a little bit of freedom from the addiction. You're able to um, more fully rise up to the challenge of recovery. And it's only through this complete and humble ownership for one's actions that you can truly begin the path to freedom and recovery. The third pitfall of faith and recovery is having the wrong reasons for recovery. Just like we said, shame is one of the biggest triggers. When you are running from shame, it's like running on a treadmill. You really don't go anywhere. Because God said so, because it's wrong, because others will judge me, because I'm not worthy, all of these things will, all of these reasons for recovery will negatively impact your recovery. People who are not of a religious background. They don't 
these are not their reasons. They're focusing on the semen retention, the health benefits, the focus, the financial benefits. And so they're not really staying in this toxic shame cycle. Instead, they're just focusing on the end goal, those benefits that they want to achieve. When your reason is because it's wrong or because God said so, a lot of men will feel frustrated, sexually oppressed, and stay stuck in the addiction cycle. When they change their reasons to something like, I want to be, you know, more focused, more disciplined. I want to be a better example to my family. I And, and they're focusing on the positive benefits. I, I want to, you know, feel more energized throughout the day. When these are your benefits, you're more likely to achieve the goal. Recovery from pornography is not and should not be a matter of shame, guilt, or arbitrary rules. It's something that is meant to have a powerful, positive effect on your life. So choose reasons that are positive and inspiring rather than focusing on the negative or the shame. The fourth pitfall for religious people in recovery is an unhealthy view of sex. Feeling like all sexual urges are bad can leave you feeling fundamentally wrong, broken, and bad, which can just lead you to feel really hopeless on the path to recovery. I've seen a lot of people who have a sexual desire and they will shame themselves and feel guilty and depressed and miserable over it. And that's just a really rough place to be. Instead, it's important to remember that our sexual urges are fundamentally a part of who we are as humans. They're a part of our biology. They're a part of our souls. And they don't make you a bad person. Acting on those in a sexually explicit way, um, go against God's purposes, your highest potential, and your ability to feel enlightenment and spiritual connection. But the urges themselves are not bad. Alternatively, some may feel overwhelmed by cultural messages that say sex is good, whereas the church over here is saying, you know, it's bad. And it can lead you feeling really confused and mixed and torn. And in this case, it's really important to get off the fence and decide what you believe and then give that your whole heart. So, you know, it, recovery is a journey. It may not happen all at once, but... It's important to zero in on the direction that you want to go. Um, There's a biblical scripture that says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And in this case, you cannot give God your whole heart while over here also desiring and wanting to participate in these things sexually. Now, in another video... I cover why you might feel on the fence and how to get off the fence. And I will tag that after this video so that you can learn why it's okay and normal and natural for you to want porn and want recovery at the same time and also what to do about that. But that fourth pitfall, having that unhealthy view of sex, that sex is bad, that all sexual urges are bad can keep you trapped in the addiction cycle. Instead, try to remember that it's a part of who you are and it's a healthy and good part of who you are at the right time and the right place. In conclusion, let's talk a little bit about conquering sexual addiction with faith. So if you're conquering sexual addiction for yourself, I will also talk about, um, next I'll talk about if you're helping somebody else. So first, if you are conquering this addiction for yourself, although you may be coming from a really rough place spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, take hope that so many men who have been in your shoes have successfully recovered and changed their lives. Know that you are not alone and that you can succeed in this. As you walk this road, I encourage you to have faith and look forward to the future with hope and optimism. You are on the right path. You are on the same path that even King David in the Bible, a man of God, after he fell to lust and sexual sin, rose back up again to be a great leader among the 
among the Jews and that you can do the same in your life. Your sins are known by God and God still loves you. He is there to support you and to help you heal. And as you incorporate aspects of your faith, prayer, fasting, um, reading your Bible, reading your scriptures, whatever faith you are, and continuing on a positive path of growth, a positive path that invites God into your life every day, a path full of gratitude that you will see positive changes. They may not come all at once, but that steady daily practice of faith will help you to overcome this addiction. Remember that God loves you, that he forgives you, but he also wants you to grow and he wants you to have challenges that you can overcome so that you can feel the success and the victory in the end and so that you will develop that relationship with him, look to him for healing and strength. Um, and remember that, you know, God sees your potential. He knows what you are meant to become, what you were born to become, what he created you to become and because of that he will help you and part of what you're going through may be for your long-term growth and success that he hasn't forgotten you but he wants you to be victorious in the end this is ultimately the process of becoming strong and reaching the potential that he sees in you if you are helping someone else in recovery remember that Faith and recovery is a journey and it's deeply emotional and personal and that the greatest thing that you can do is to be a loving and supportive friend, not to shame somebody or to criticize them, critique them, but really to provide a safe space for them to discuss the good, bad, and the ugly of what they're feeling and what they're experiencing. You know, pray, pray, for, pray for them, pray for yourself. Um, Remind your friend, your loved one of God's love and your faith in them and his faith in them. And most importantly, be patient. Whether you are in recovery for yourself or you're helping someone else, be patient. It is a journey and it is worth it in the end. But it can be, it can definitely be an uphill battle. Um, if you are struggling or if you know someone who is struggling that doesn't have that support structure or that could benefit from more accountability, more support or tools for success in recovery. Check us out for free at member.fightthebeast.org. We have a Christian men's group on there. We have people from over 30 countries, several faiths and backgrounds that are all working together towards the common goal of quitting porn, quitting sexual addiction and we invite you to come participate and join and get the support that you need to be able to successfully recover from this addiction. Know that you are not alone and that others have been successful in quitting porn and sexual addiction. Know that God loves you. And I hope this video helps you to understand the pitfalls of faith in sexual addiction recovery and how you can rise above them.